Here recently I've had a bunch of people asking about updates on our solar kiln. So let's do a quick review, see what things that could be improved upon and see what things are actually working. Let's do this. I actually changed the location of where I was planning on putting the solar kiln. I put it out next to my building because the wife didn't necessarily care for it to be right next to the house. So it is currently out here next to my shed where is my uh, uh, sawmill is over there and I got some other wood drying in there. But I kind of just give you as an idea of location. The exterior paint is still holding up very well. I don't see much deterioration in about a year's time. The panels on the top are also doing well. And the sealant I used seems to be doing well and keeping the water out. The vents that I've put in, well, I've adjusted them a couple times, but due to a lot of rain water here lately, these are getting really hard to adjust. Let's see if I can move this at all. Nope, that's not moving at all. So that can be a challenge and something definitely to improve upon. Maybe make this a little bit looser, but they do work. The solar panels and the fans that I have installed in there still work. It is not sunny right now, so they're not turning, but I'll show you a little more in depth on those later, but they do still work after almost a year. Something else I'm not sure if I touched on in the other video is making sure that the ground level is even. I had to do a variety of different pieces of wood under here to make it nice and level. It's a little hard to see because I get grass growing up. It's kind of a challenge to mow around, but just make sure this bottom stays nice and level so all the wood inside stays level. Now let's see if we can get this door open. I have a feeling it might be a little bit of a challenge, but let's give it a shot. Ah, let me try this side. Right. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> With all the rain we've had here lately, I have a feeling the wood right here has swollen and the door's probably swollen, making it really tight in between there. And that's supposed to just slide across. Should have made that a little bit bigger. So instead of sliding it, let's see if we can get these screws out and hopefully that'll just pop off. There we go. Stuck at the top too. That's one way to do it. Like that. And the sun just came out and I wanted to let you listen. If you listen carefully. You can hear the fans going. They spin up pretty nicely. Here's another little tip I did not mention in the other video. If you noticed, I have some styrofoam on both sides of the wood. So we're trying to minimize the airflow going around the wood. We want it to go through in between each of these little slots and that'll help dry it out. So I just have some foam right there blocking it. And you can hear the fans just came on again. But also on the top here, it's a little hard to see, there is a black blanket that goes over the top of the wood. And that's just to keep it from getting sun bleached and just dry rotted from the sun hitting that top. Here's a sort of another view of that black blanket. If you look kind of down in between all these little ribs, you can see that it's not blocking the front of the wood. We want the airflow to still go through the wood Again, it's just protecting the top layer so it doesn't get sun bleached. And if you've never done this before, you might be wondering why I have concrete blocks on top of the wood. Well, as this wood goes to dry, it will have a tendency to warp and twist, but putting this added weight on the top of there, it deters that. So hopefully by the time it fully dries, it'll dry flat. It's not perfect, but it does help. I also did something in this kiln that some people frown on. I have one inch and two inch slabs kind of mixed together and it's supposed to at least air dry takes a year per inch. So in theory, these should be a lot wetter than these still, but uh, let's go find out. And just so there's no confusing, I did just mention air drying. This is not air drying. This is considered kiln drying or solar kiln drying. So in theory, this right here is supposed to dry everything in roughly half the time or possibly faster. So uh, let's get my moisture meter and let's find out. To see how wet our wood is, I purchased a real expensive Wagner moisture meter. This is the Orion 950. It allows you to measure quarter inch and three quarter inch depths. It also gives you a guide here so that you can put your settings in for the exact piece of wood, which this is ash. So hopefully we'll get a nice accurate reading and it'll allow us to test each of those really accurately. And as I go to unload these, I set up a couple saw horses here to make it a little bit easier to set everything on. That's the plastic peeling off of the styrofoam. It's got so hot in there. Sorry. 
I do have to mention right here that this two inch slab that was on the top, all these boards are really heavy to put in, especially the two inch slab. And this right here, even though it still has a good bit of weight, I can tell right off the bat, there's a lot less weight to it than it was before. Now, as I go to move this second board, this is one of the one inchers. You'll notice it has a nice little crack or what they call a check right here on the end. And if I move to the other side, there's one there as well. Don't be surprised that happens in a drying process. I decided to move both of these boards under my carport because it was getting a little overexposed on the camera trying to do the readings. So let's test them under here. This species of wood is supposed to be white ash and so the setting for this is 0 0.60 for the depth. I'm setting it to three quarters of an inch dip deep because I'm gonna be measuring the two inch board first. All right, let's measure this. It's around 11, just over 12 back down to 11. So it seems to be reading primarily between 11 and 12%, and that's three quarter inches deep. Now keep in mind that this is the two inch board, but at a, between 11 and 12% moisture, that is still a little bit on the high side for me. So it's gonna need a little bit more drying. Let's try the one inch board. For the one inch board, I'm gonna change it to quarter inch deep because it's not nearly as thick as a two inch. All right, here's the readings on the one inch board. Six, nice, fives. Sixes, seven up, got a little bit up to about nine. Wow, 10, that's kind of funny it got to 10 there, but overall, I'm gonna move this down so I can show you. It's right in there, it hits 10, but that's kind of the center of the board. As soon as I go past that point, it drops right back down. So this board should be usable, nice. Now obviously this kiln has been drying the wood, but in comparison to just air dried wood, how much? Let me take you over to an air-dried pile and we'll compare them. And here's the air-dried log. This was actually cut a couple weeks before the kiln drying stuff, so it actually had a slight head start. Uh, unfortunately, I only have two inch slabs on it, so I'd have to figure something out on the one inch to compare it, but this is what I'm gonna use. Using the same setting at 0 0.60 and the depth at three quarter inches like we did, we're going to measure this two inch slab. All right, are you ready? Oh my goodness, that's upper 20s, 29, 28, 28, 27, 29. Do you see that? <laughs> Remember the other one was between 11 and 12 in the kiln. This is air dried and it's still almost 30. That's crazy. So for the two inch wood, does the solar kiln actually work? Well, the kiln, it was what? 11 to 12% moisture and the air dried was around 27 to 29. I mean, literally half the moisture obviously it works. Now let's see if we can measure the one inch. For the one inch pieces, I don't really have a good comparison, at least not time-wise. I do have some one inch boards here. These were cut probably six months to a year before those that were put in the uh, kiln. So it's not a true comparison time-wise, but I think I'm gonna test it out just to see how close this is in relation, considering it's been air drying for so much longer. All right, let's give this some measuring. 23, 26, 21, 25. It's jumping all around, but there's even 28 at one point. But you can tell right there that it's in the 20s versus the before when we measured the other. It didn't get above 10. So for the one inch wood, whew, over half difference. Look at it, a third difference. That is crazy. Okay, so for the one inch wood, the kiln dried, was lower than 10 for most of it. So say like eight to 10. And for the air dried was well over 20. Even at one point it was at 30. And it had been sitting drying for about six months to a year longer than the kiln drying wood. So obviously it's not the best place to air dry, but I mean, it should be a lot lower. At least you would think closer to the kiln drying, but no. This kiln dried stuff, I should be able to take it in and start working with it right now. That air dried, no, that still has to sit out for a long time. So, if you are interested in building a kiln, this right here, I have made a previous video in it, of it, and I'll put a link to that in the description so make sure you check it out. Otherwise, you know, I hope you can get out in your shop, maybe take some kiln dried wood and work it, make it look really pretty, and make somebody in your family a really cool project.